This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. So today we are studying a new chapter, which is classification of elements and periodicity in properties. Now the topics that we are going to discuss first, there will be introduction. And after that, there will be Dobre Nuts uh, triad, then Newland's law of octave, Mendeleev's classification, features of Mendeleev's periodic table, Mosley's work, modern periodic table, placement of elements based on electronic configuration. So we'll start with introduction. First, we have to know why this periodicity in properties for different types of elements that are present naturally, why it is required? What is the significance of it? So there are millions of chemical compounds existing in nature with different composition and properties. And all these chemical compounds, they are formed from these 118 naturally occurring elements. So 118, these are the number of naturally occurring elements. And when they react with each other, there is different possibilities possible because see this number is already high 118 number of elements and this number of elements they are reacting with each other and there are different types of uh, probability so that is why it is millions of chemical compounds they are existing in nature now as this number is very high that is 118 this number of elements this is a large number of elements it is really difficult to study the chemistry of these elements individually and then there is it is not that only we have elements obviously 118 elements are present we have to know their properties so individually if we do so that is already difficult and they are also making some compounds by reacting with each other that means now the number is also increasing if you consider the compounds so that is why handling of this large number of elements millions number of compounds formed from them to remove that uh, difficulty, this idea of periodicity in properties, that is the uh, introductory idea of this. So to remove that problem, scientists search for a systematic way to organize their properties so that we don't have to deal with them individually. There will be some systematic way to organize their properties. And it may be that some of the elements their behavior there is some similarity so there we can make some groups also so the aim is here to keep the elements of same properties in the same place so suppose out of these 118 some of these elements you are making a group so obviously now we don't have to remember so many things individually because they are already in a group obviously there will be some difference but there will be some common properties also so that is why now we can keep them in the same place. So this periodic classification follows a logical consequence of electronic configuration of atoms. Remember in the last chapter that we have finished, we have uh, seen how we can uh, write the electronic configuration of atoms. Once we know the electronic configuration of atoms, based on that knowledge, we can do this type of periodic classification because this classification follows a logical consequence of this electronic configuration. Now, there are many concepts of classification of elements that are proposed by various scientists from early to modern period. Now, if we see this uh, from historical point of view, that is the historical development, then the first idea was given by Johann Wolfgang Doberainer. Mainly we call him as Doberainer. Then the next modification, A, E, B, D, though uh, we will not discuss it, fine. But still, if we see from historical point of view, these are the different uh, scientists in different time period. You can see how this concept is developed. So after Doberainer, this will not be discussed. The next one, there is a third one is Newland. After that, Lothar Meyer and Dritz Mendel Mendeleev, these two scientists, uh, they are actually more or less in the same period. So that is why it is written in this way, same period, Dritz Mendeleev. So classification based on atomic weight led to the construction of a proper form of periodic table. So atomic weight starting from hydrogen, gradually it will increase. 
so the classification we can do based on atomic weight so this is the primary idea for this development of periodic table though modern periodic table that is the latest uh, periodic table that we use that is obviously not based on atomic weight but how it started if we consider that point obviously it is it has started from uh, that is the it is based on atomic weight of the elements so first we'll see dober eina triad so why it is triad because he made a group of three elements so that is what is triad and there is some similarity so what he has done he classified some elements not all the elements some elements with similar chemical properties into the group of three elements he classified some elements with similar chemical properties into the group of three elements that means in each group there will be three elements so that is why the term is triad now in this triad the atomic weight of the middle element because there are total three so one two three the middle one that is the second one its atomic weight nearly equal to the arithmetic mean of the atomic weight of the remaining two so the first element and the third element if you take average arithmetic mean average of this uh, their atomic weight the value that you will get that is actually nearly equal to the atomic weight of the second element that is the middle element okay so he has found this type of observation so if you see we have some triad though uh, obviously not all the elements are not included he has uh, found this type of uh, similarity only in some elements so here we have some triads three triads you can see the first triad there is lithium sodium and potassium and the corresponding atomic mass is given 7 for lithium 23 for sodium and potassium so if i am writing here 1 to 3 that means sodium is the middle element so if you consider this value 23 this must be the arithmetic mean of lithium and potassium that means if you add 39 plus 7 divided by 2 that is you are taking the arithmetic mean see this is uh, we are what we are getting we are getting 23 similarly the next triad we have chlorine bromine and iodine chlorine having uh, atomic mass 35.5 then 80 then 127 So in this case, if you take the arithmetic mean of 35.5 and 127, you get 81.25, which is nearly equal to 80. And the last triad, calcium, strontium, barium, 40 and 137, we have to take the arithmetic mean of it, which is equal to 88.5. Again, it is nearly equal to 88. Okay. However, only a limited number of elements can be grouped as triad. so it is not uh, that is you can do it for uh, all the elements no that is not the case only it is uh, for some limited number of elements so as it is containing in each uh, group there are total three elements so that is why this statement that is i'm talking about the second statement in triad the atomic weight of middle element it is at the mean of the other two this statement is called Dobereiner law of triad. Okay. So this has some limitation. He could identify only three triads that you can see here: one, two, three, from the elements known at that time. Because if you look at the time period, it is very that is ancient time. So that is why at that time period, whatever elements are available, because with time more elements are discovered. So, if you consider at that time, whatever elements present at that time, all the elements could not be classified in the form of triad. So, this is the limitation. And this law, it is also not applicable when elements are having very low atomic mass or having very high atomic mass. So, these two are the limitations for Dobereiner's triad. The next one. Newland's law of octave. So, as the term says, octave. So, it is something related to age, the number eight. Newland's arranged the then known elements. That means the elements known at that time in increasing order of their atomic masses. And what he has observed that when he has reached the eighth element, 
there is some similarities with the properties form that is with respect to the first one so number one and number eight there is some similarity so that is why it is known as newland's law of octave so he compared the similarities with the octave of music and arrange the elements having similar properties under the same note we know that if you consider musical notation like this this is the first one is indian saregama so there are total seven actually but the eighth one there will be some uh, similarity fine so here we have hydrogen then lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen so in this way it is increasing according to uh, atomic mass first hydrogen then lithium then beryllium then boron so atomic mass is gradually increasing so there is increasing when we are increasing the atomic masses we observe that every eighth element there is some similarities in properties fine so the eighth element here is f so there is some similarity with h then again the eighth element after finishing the second row it is chlorine so there is some similarity so in this way we can move but here also we have some limitations it is not valid for elements that had atomic masses higher than calcium okay so you can maximum uh, go up to calcium and it is restricted to only 56 elements and there is no room for new elements because at that time whatever elements are were there there is again uh, with time some new elements are, were discovered so how to feed those newly discovered elements in this uh, new lens law of octave that is not possible because there is no room for the new elements which were not present at that time discovery of inert gases at later stage made the ninth element similar to the first one okay so in this case what he is saying eighth element has similar properties to those of first but actually that is not the case with uh, that is when inner gases are developed at later stage now what we can see that the ninth element is having similarity to the first one okay the next after uh, newland's law of octave it's mendeleev's classification now the year is 1868 when Lothar Mayer, another scientist, not Mendeley, but he had developed, he had developed a table of elements that closely resembles the modern periodic table. So see, gradually with time, if you watch the historical development, it is becoming more close to the modern periodic table. So now when it is 1868, Lothar Mayer had developed a table of elements that closely resembles the modern periodic table. He plotted the physical properties such as atomic volume, melting point, boiling point against atomic weight. And there is some periodic pattern observed. So he considered some physical properties such as atomic volume, melting point, boiling point, and he made a plot with respect to the atomic weight. And he observed that there is some periodic pattern. That is the same pattern it is after a particular element it is again uh, starting so that is it is a periodical pattern now during the same period Mendeley independently proposed that properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic weights and that is called periodic law so it is periodic function of atomic weight so with increase in properties uh, sorry with increase in atomic weight the properties will change then there will a point will reach after that the properties will be we will see some similarity now this statement of Mendeleev that is very close to the modern periodic table right though modern periodic table is not based on uh, periodic function of atomic weight it is actually based on atomic number but from that uh, if you consider 1868 that time period obviously this is a really a developed law compared to the other laws that we have discussed 
He listed the known elements that are present at that time in several vertical columns in order of increasing atomic weight. When you will see the picture, it will be clear. Though Dobereiner started the study of periodic relationship with the elements, that is the first we there is this idea of periodic relationship with elements that is first started by Dobereiner. That is true. But it was Mendel who was responsible for publishing the periodic law for the first. So the idea started uh, from Dobereiner, but ultimately it is it was Mendel who was responsible for publishing the periodic law for the first time. So until now, so this is the most successful. Now, what are the features of Mendeley's periodic table? As it is said that in the previous slide, the last point, sorry, the previous one, Mendeley listed known elements at that time in several vertical columns. Now, this vertical column, they are known as groups. And there are seven horizontal rows that are called period. So, period are horizontal rows like this, and groups are vertical columns. That is the difference. Now, under each group, there are two subgroups. So, suppose this is one group. This is there is A, there is B. That means there is subgroup under each group. So, if it is group 2, it is 2A and 2B. If it is group 8, it is 8A and 8B like this. And all the elements appearing in a group will have similar type of properties. Okay. For the first time, elements were comprehensively classified in such a way that elements of similar properties were placed in the same group. So whatever, uh, until now, whatever uh, different scientists were there and their uh, proposed concept, if you compare all of this, this is the most acceptable, okay? So that is why it is said, for the first time, elements were comprehensively classified in such a way that we can get some similar properties in the same group. Now, some of the elements did not fit in with his scheme of classification. If we follow the order of atomic weight strictly, so as it is already based on the atomic weight of the elements, and if you follow the atomic weight strictly, suppose there is some, dec after decimal, there is some value. So if you follow it strictly, not uh, what is the nearest atomic weight or something like this. If you follow it strictly, it is observed that some elements are not fitted. Fine. Now, what is the example? For example, the atomic mass of beryllium, at that time it was known to be 40. But he has to consider it as 9 and assign beryllium a proper place. So if we consider the correct atomic mass known at that time, then this should not have the, that is, it is not fitting according to his scheme of classification. So to match this classification, what he considered, he considered it as nine. He has he had to do so, fine, right? to fit in in proper place. So that is one example. And also he left some blank spaces because there were no known elements with the appropriate properties at that time. So suppose when these periodic table is made based on atomic weight and we are getting some periodic uh, property. That is after a particular position, we are getting again getting a similarity in properties. Now, when we are doing so, it may be that there is some elements that should have a particular property, but that element is not present at that time. So what to do? He left some blank spaces in that uh, particular element. So, what to say that we, as if we know the properties at that time, but there is no such elements actually present having those properties. But these properties are expected from this element. Now, what happened later? These elements are actually discovered and that is properly fitted in those blank spaces made by Mendeley. So, for example, he gave names eka aluminium and eka silicon to those elements which were to be placed just below al aluminium and silicon respectively. So the element that should be placed just below aluminium, 
that is not present at that time not discovered but as there is some expected properties for that particular element which is not discovered and there is some vacant uh, that is blank space but he gave a name for this yet to be discovered element and the name is eka aluminum because it is after aluminum eka silicon because it is after silicon that means in the same group obviously fine so these are the features of mendeley's periodic table now we will have a look in this table to so see as we have just seen that beryllium to match it after lithium there is beryllium so if we consider it as 14 then it should not be here because if it is 14 then after it there is boron which is having 10.81 so 14 cannot come before 10 so that is why he had to make it 9 so that it can match properly and below aluminum and silicon see this is aluminum this is silicon and just below it this is the actually the position of eka aluminum and eka silicon but here you can already see gallium and germanium is written 69.72 72.59 this is actually uh, written because it is though at that time it was not present but later it was discovered so that is why it is already written but remember these are actually not present at that time when he made this periodic table so these put two positions that i have just marked these are actually the position of eka silicon eka aluminum but later it was fulfilled by gallium and germanium which is having exactly the same properties which is already predicted by mendeley at that time so this is the you can say the success of his uh, periodic table that though the discovery of germanium and gallium it was much later compared to his time not during his lifetime but still it is discovered later the discovery of germanium gallium later on during his lifetime proved him correct so that is uh, the success of his periodic table Now if you look at look at this table you can see this is a predicted properties and later it was discovered this is the predicted properties later it was discovered now you can find some similarity here the physical properties and uh, formula of oxide formula of oxide and formula of chloride that you can see all these are predicted by mendeley these two column predicted 68 but when it is actually discovered see how close these two values density 5.9 it is almost same melting point it is mentioned low but this is actually low then formula for oxide e here capital e is written because at that time we do not know what is the symbol so e for element you can consider it as if it is uh, the notation for element e2o3 that is the formula for the oxide but when it is actually discovered it was uh, what is the formula of the oxide it is also ga2o3 uh, that means it is matching with e2o3 similarly eo2 that is the uh, eka silicon and it is matching with geo2 now if you consider the chloride it is ecl3 here the oxidation state of e is plus 3 and gacl3 so this is also matching okay but we have to know what is what are the anomalies of this mendeley's periodic table that is also important here non metallic hydrogen that was placed along with metals for example lithium sodium potassium so see hydrogen is here it is in the same group of lithium sodium potassium but hydrogen is non metal so it should not be present with these metals the next point is isotopes were not given separate place as they have different atomic masses isotope if you consider the definition here atomic number is same but mass number is not same because of different number of neutron because neutron number proton number when you add together i'm trying to say proton number p and neutron number when you add these two then it will give you the atomic mass now for isotopes p number is same 
but neutral number is different that means atomic mass will also be different now this periodic table it is based on atomic weight that means if you consider suppose just take the example of carbon we know there are different types of c12 c13 c14 but all of these as they are having different atomic masses they should not have same position in the periodic table they should have different position right but that is not given uh, in this periodic table the third point the increasing order of atomic mass could not be maintained in some cases here we can see the example cobalt and nickel see cobalt and nickel at a first glance it seems they are having almost same but if you consider it very strictly after decimal there is 93 but in case of nickel it is 71 so as it is based on atomic weight it should be after nickel but that is not the case nickel is after cobalt so that is the anomaly then again you can consider tellurium and iodine they are also 127.6 but iodine is lesser 126.9 so t should be after iodine but that is not the case so these are the anomalies next point elements with large difference in properties were included in the same group now when some elements are grouped together that is they are present in same group there should be some similarities but if there is large difference in properties they should not be present in the same group now if you consider these metals copper ag obviously metal sodium potassium that is also metal but remember there is though all are metal but copper silver they are hard metal sodium potassium they are soft metal they are so soft you can cut it with knife so though they are metals but there is difference in the physical properties they should not be in the same group they should not be present in the same group but see sodium potassium present in the first group here copper is also present silver is also present so under each group as we know there are sub group a and b so for this group this is the period k is present as 1a copper is present as 1a but they are in same group there should be some properties but these are the soft metals so these two should not be with the soft metals because they are hard metals so these are the some points of anomalies for mendeleev's periodic table now mendeleev's periodic table we have seen some anomalies and if you consider the modern periodic table which is based on atomic number not mass but how we switch from this atomic mass to atomic number that link is basically based on mosley's work so mosley's work basically he has not done anything directly with periodic table as you have observed for other scientists but he observed some important uh, of there is some important observation made by him and that is based on some x-ray experiment based on that experiment there is a plot and from that plot it is clear that how the anomalies of mendeleev's periodic table we can remove and we can have the most uh, modern version of periodic table so it is in 1930 obviously after mendeleev Henry Mosley carried out a systematic series of experiments. It is not just a single experiment. There is a series of experiments. It shows that the frequency of the X-rays emitted from an elemental target. So different elements we have to take. Series of experiment. For each experiment, there is a particular. Element. So one element, suppose element A, how it is interacting with the X-ray. Then element B, how it is interacting with the X-ray, like this. so it shows that the frequencies of the x rays emitted from an elemental target after bombardment by cathode rays cathode rays we have studied in detail in structure of atom uh, chapter so bombardment by cathode rays on the elements by the using some x ray so from this experiment it is observed that these frequencies of x rays 
they are actually the characteristic of that element. So depending on what element you have taken, the frequency will change. Now this type of pattern, it could be used to identify the charge on this atomic nucleus. So each experiment, there is some specific element taken. And for each element, we know atomic number is different. Now atomic number, which is we generally denoted by Z or P, it is actually the total positive charge present in the nucleus. Now as these frequencies, they are characteristic of this element, it means we can use it to identify the charge on its atomic nucleus. That means to identify its atomic new number, which is nothing but charge on the atomic nucleus. So just for example, if I'm saying oxygen having atomic number eight, what it means? Total number of protons in the nucleus, that is a total positive charge in the nucleus, that is eight. Obviously, electron number is also same, but atomic number when we see it is actually the total proton number. Okay, so he observed a linear correlation between the atomic number and the frequency of the X rays emitted. So we will have a graph where on one axis there will be atomic number and the other axis there will be frequency. Though directly frequency is not taken, see how it is taken. In X axis it is simple, it is simply that the atomic number Z. But when it is y axis, the frequency it is root over frequency, and this root over frequency it is actually equal to a into z minus b. Z is actually the atomic number, and a and b, these two terms, they are basically constant. So we have to plot it in the y axis. Okay, and unit will be in hertz, root over hertz, obviously, because Z is nothing but a number, there is no unit. And A and B, these two are constant. So in the left hand side, it is root hertz that is the unit. Now you can see there is a straight line going from this almost origin. And as we are increasing the atomic number 1, 2, 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 10, there is increase in the value of root nu. Okay. So each point you can see this is one, two, three, four. All these are points mentioned on this. So some these atomic numbers, if you draw a line corresponding, that is, if you draw a straight line, the number that you get atomic number, that is actually the frequency for that atomic number. That is root nu for that atomic number. So the atomic number that is present at this point, this is the value of the root nu for that particular element. So here this root nu equal to a into z minus v. This nu is the frequency of the x-ray emitted by the element with atomic number z. These two are constant, fine? And they are having same values for all the elements. Now, what is the ultimate conclusion we can draw from this Mosley's work and this plot? This led to the modification of the periodic table. That is whatever you have observed in case of Mendeleev's periodic table. After this Mosley's work, there will be some modification. And what is the modification? Very important modification with elements. Modification of the periodic table with elements now arranged on the basis of atomic number, not A. Because here this frequency, which is related to Z, that is now directly, it is changing very smooth way with atomic number. That means it, the element should be arranged not on the basis of atomic weight, capital A, but it should be on the basis of atomic number Z. Okay, so this is the important modification made after mostly work. So now we will see the modern periodic table, what it says. Based on this work, now we can develop the law and it will now be converted to the statement, the physical and chemical properties of the elements, periodic function of their atomic number, not mass. So these properties of the elements are correlated to the arrangement of electrons in the outermost shell. 
that is the valence shape and we already know how to write electronic configuration arrangement of electrons in outermost shell that is actually the electronic configuration in the valence shell now different elements having similar outer shell electronic configuration similar outer shell electronic configuration means what suppose i am saying 2s2 2p2 that means two electrons in 2s that is the maximum capacity and in 2p maximum capacity is 6 but suppose only two electrons are there so 2s2 2p2 now when i am seeing similar outer shell electronic configuration that is 2s2 2p2 suppose that is for one element so if i am saying similar outer shell ec electronic configuration it will be something like this 3s2 3p2 so what i am doing i am keeping everything same that is uh, azimuthal number same only the principal quantum number i am change it may be 4s2 4p2 that means for all this electronic configuration in the valence shell remember it is in the valence shell that is we are interested in not the whole configuration only the valence shell configuration so for these three elements that i have just written here there must be some similarity in the properties okay so that is the theme of this modern periodic table now if you look at this table right hand side suppose if you take elements in group 1 in the modern periodic table so these are the elements present which are basically known as alkali metals in the next column you can find their atomic number 311 19 37 55 87 87 number of electrons in different shells of capital k l m n and p you know what is k l m n p that is already discussed these number of electrons are like this 2 and 1 so 2 and 1 it is basically 1s2 2s1 2 is k that is 1s2 two electrons are present and in l it is 2s1 okay, if you are not comfortable with this just focus on this part that is valence shell ec that is the most important so lithium having atomic number 3 so if you write the full electronic configuration total three electrons so it will be 1s2 2s1 but we are interested only in the ec of valence shell so ec of valence shell is 2s1 only then for sodium atomic number 11 so total 11 electrons 1s2 2s2 2p2 1s2 2s2 2p2 sorry 2s2 2p6 we have to fill these shells until we reach 11 according to our form 1s2 2s2 2p6 so here you have total 8 electron here you have total 2 and then 2 plus 2 plus 6 already 10 electrons one electron left that will be in 3s1 according to our bow principle so 281 that is mentioned here like this klm but what is important observation we are interested only in this part 3s1 similarly if you do it for the other elements you will see the outermost electron configuration is like this so there is a similarity in the valence shell ec so that is why they are in the same group okay the repetition of physical and chemical properties at regular interval that is actually the periodicity okay so lithium atomic number 3 so the next atomic number 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 when you reach 10, after that there is 11 then only you get this type of similar electronic configuration in the valence shell that is why lithium is having some common properties with sodium then again from sodium atomic number 11 you have 12 13 now you move up to atomic number 18 the next one 19 then again you will find some similarity so after a particular interval you are getting some similarity in property that is the periodicity 
the numerous forms of periodic table have been devised from time to time a modern version which is also known as long form of periodic table of element elements that is the most convenient and widely used okay next we will see this modern periodic table carefully so there are total 18 groups 18 vertical columns one two three up to 14 sorry 12 then 13 then 18 now if you uh, compare with the uh, old version or sometimes you will also see in the in some books in the modern periodic table also there is some roman numeral use that is i'm trying to say one two then three three a three b like this but if you consider the most modern version you should not use all these roman numerals it is simply number starting from one ending at 18 so 18 vertical columns and how many rows horizontal total seven one two three up to seven okay now from the color you can see uh, there are different types of uh, compounds it is not that always a uh, same group are given same color it is not based on that though in some cases you can find just for example if you consider halogen all the halogens are given same color but uh, some other colors are also there just for example if you look at this color deep pink it is basically used for uh, denoting the non metals and the metals light pink that metals you can find in group 1 and also that is the alkyl sorry for sorry uh, let me say it again for non metals this is the color given but when it is metals metals may be different types it may be alkali metals it may be transition metals or it may be any other types of metal so if you specifically say alkali metal this is the color used and if you say transition metals which is basically present in the middle block known as d block then there is some purple color and for other metals some metals are also present in p block though i am saying all these terms p block s block d block but what this actually means that we'll also discuss in this chapter only right now for uh, to make you understand i'm just using these terms s block p block so this is actually s block then this total portion it is d and then it is p so in p block also there are some metals so different types of metals denoted with different color noble gases are given white color then actinoids which is this one and this is under a block that will also i will discuss in detail but here what these colors mean i'm just trying to say that for actinoid series and lanthanoid series both are under a block that is this part both are under a block and two different colors are used for them groups are numbered 1 to 18 in accordance with IUPA recommendation and this replaces the old numbering method 1a 7a 1b like this so you don't have to use that each period starts with ns1 so just take this suppose i am taking this fourth period so fourth period will start from 4s1 which is the configuration for alkali metals and it is ending by group 18 if you move in the same line you are ending at krypton that means here the last electron in krypton it should enter in 4p6 because i am talking about fourth period similarly if you take the seventh period Francium, it should start from 7s1 and OG, the last element that uh, where the last electron should be in 7p. Right? So here n value is basically the principal quantum number. Placement of electrons, uh, sorry, placement of elements based on electronic configuration. So placement of elements in the periodic table based on EC, but not just any EC, it is the EC of balance shell only. In the modern periodic table, the elements are organized in seven periods, 18 groups that we have already seen. Now this placement of element, it is 
directly connected to outer shell ec okay and that is why it is important for us to analyze the change in the ec of elements along the period and also down the group so separately first we will see how the ec is changing when you are moving horizontally along the period that is in the same period you are moving starting from group 1 up to 8 then try to see what is the change in ec and what is the effect for that change on the properties of the elements then also you analyze down the group when you are moving what is the change in ec and how it is affecting the properties so we know in the same group there are some common properties but also there is some uh, smooth change as you, as you move down okay not always smooth but there is some that is somehow you can predict when you are moving down a particular uh, group okay just take alkali metals lithium sodium to potassium suppose you are moving down and down there are some common properties but also what are the differences in properties that also you can predict okay so that is it is important to analyze the change in ec in the valence shell first along the period and also down the group both are necessary so first we'll see how it is changing along the period now along the period the value of principal quantum number that is the small a or you can say the energy level this remains same and that is why when i am saying second period basically i am saying principal quantum number 2 when i am saying seven period principal quantum number is seven okay so period number is nothing but the corresponding value of energy level Number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals available in that particular energy level. So suppose if I am taking n value as 3, how many atomic orbitals are possible? n, you know it is 3s, 3p, 3d. There is no other orbital. Now under 3s there is only 1, under 3p there is 3 under 3d there is 5 now if you add this 3 3 plus 1 4 4 plus 5 9 now 9 atomic orbitals available but number of electrons if you count obviously it will be twice because in each atomic orbital maximum two electrons you can place so it should be 9 into 2 18 elements right now how to move that see here i have written 3s 3p 3d Sorry, one mistake I have done. When I'm saying that number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals available in that energy level. Now, if you directly consider this statement, it will seem like this. But you also have to remember the above principle, which uh, that is this picture if you consider. So when it is second period, these two orbitals are in. But it doesn't mean when it is third period, it is basically 3s, 3p, 3d. No, that is not the case because why it is so? After 3s, according to above, the next you have to move to 3p. But after 3p, you do not move to 3d. After 3p, you move to 4s. So that is why when it is third period, though at a first glance it seems you should consider 3d, but actually you will consider only these two okay and when you move to fourth period it is not that 4s 4p 4d 4a no when you move to 4p i'm sorry fourth period you have to consider 4s after 3p it is not 3d after 3p according to above this 4s you have to consider in fourth period 4s then 3d and then 4p so these three will be present in four then when it is 5, after 4p, there is 5s, after 5s, 4d, after 4d, there is 5p. So in this way, it will move. So don't think that when it is second period, it is 2s to be, when it is third period, it is 3s, 3p, 3d. It is not like this, okay? So that is why in third period, only these two, if you consider 1 plus 3, 4, that means total 8 electrons 
maximum you can place and when i'm saying eight electrons you can place that means maximum eight elements can be there okay if you have a look in the periodic table that you have just seen this is the third period right so how many elements one two then three four five six seven eight so eight elements maximum possible because maximum eight electrons you can place for second also it is eight because 2s and 2p involved for first it is only uh, two elements and when you move to four now see the number is obviously increased because now 3d is also included now it will be basically this part is now extra 3 to 12 so here we will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. so 8 plus 10 it will be total 18 okay so here we have total two elements two then eight second period third period also eight then 18 so in this way you can get the idea that how many elements you can place in each period and to predict that this above principle will help you okay so placement of electrons when it is uh, now we are seeing it when we move along the period how it will change so period number one you have to start from one is and period number one only one is is available and in one is you can place maximum two electrons now two electrons means what only two elements and what are those two elements hydrogen and helium right so when you are seeing this uh, this slide it is better if you can uh, have some periodic table in front of you so that when you see this slide and also the periodic table simultaneously you can understand it in a better way now move to second period what are available 2s and 2p now in 2s and 2p maximum 8 electrons you can place so elements start from lithium 2s1 the next element should be 2s2 the next one should be 2s2 2p1 in this way you have to move until you reach 2s2 2p6 okay sorry this one will be new this is our there is a mistake now when you move to third period 3s and 3p have a level so again it is 8 electrons that is eight elements maximum you can place the first element starts from 3s1 then 3s2 which is basically magnesium then after 3s2 it is 3s2 3p1 okay which is aluminium and in this way you can reach up to neon so 3p6 so this common pattern ns2 np6 is always reached except the first one because here you cannot have maximum you can have ns2 not np6 okay but after that it is you are what you are reaching in the last element it is the common pattern ns2 np6 then for fourth and fifth period now after 4s there is 3d and 4p according to above and uh, total nine atomic orbitals available that means 18, 18 electrons and 18 electron means 18 elements start from potassium end at group 18 which is noble gas krypton then fifth one is same so in between 5 and 5s 5p we also have 4d maximum 9 atomic orbital that means 18 electrons 18 at elements also starting from rubidium ending at xenon noble gas and for sixth and seventh now in between cx 6 f and 6p we have 4f and 5d this is 5d and uh, in seven period in between 7s and 7p we have 5 4f and 6d now for f seven atomic orbitals available here it is five this is one this is three so if you add one plus seven eight eight plus five thirteen thirteen plus three it is 16 so 16 atomic orbital total that is why 32 maximum electrons you can place and that means 32 elements max starts from francium in that much 7s2 7p6 now commonly we can say each period starts with the element having general outer electronic configuration in s1 this one and it ends always with ns2 np6 which is the general electronic configuration for group 18 
because all these are group 18. This is basically first element, group 1. And this is group 8. Fine. So today we have seen how we are, uh, that is, we are analyzing the electronic configuration when you are moving along the period. In the next class, we will see how it will change when you are moving down. So we are at the end of the session. Thank you for listening.